Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. Today we are going to talk about simulation of full bridge inverter in MATLAB. So let's get started. This is a circuit diagram. Uh, one of the major differences with respect to half bridge inverter spoken in our previous video is that it contains a normal DC supply. It does not require uh, a three wire DC supply. The major drawback is overcome by having such a configuration. Uh, it requires additionally two thyristors and two freewheeling diodes in comparison to the previous circuit. So what that means is that uh, people might assume that the cost of the circuit will increase, but uh, uh, the voltage that is obtained across the load is also doubled. The power Power is four times as that of what is required for us. So that's the reason why full bridge inverter are popularly used. So let's get into the waveform analysis portion. So uh, the supply voltage is a DC voltage. So we'll be getting a pure DC waveform. The output voltage is a square wave. Whenever in the positive half cycle, you will be getting uh, uh, a voltage of Vs. That is when Q1 and Q2 conducts. And during negative half cycle, you'll be getting minus Vs when Q3 and Q4 conducts. So one of the most important and careful steps is that Q1 and Q4 or Q3 and Q2 should not be triggered simultaneously. Q1 and Q2 and then Q3 and Q4 should be triggered. So this is the output voltage and current waveform. Uh, so with respect to L load, uh, we'll only be observing the current waveform, uh, which is triangular waveform as shown in this particular case. And with respect to RL load, it's a sinusoidal waveform. So once we have uh, the analysis done with respect to the waveform part, this is the expected waveform that we are supposed to get. So let's uh, cross check uh, by simulating in MATLAB. All right, here we are. Uh, so this is a Simulink library browser. So search for PowerView block. We can directly search uh, the components that are required for us. This is required for the simulation to take place. We need a voltage measurement block. We also need a current measurement block. Add these. We need a DC voltage source. So search for DC voltage uh, and add this block as well. Once this is done, uh, we need uh, MOSFET switches. So search for MOSFET. You will be getting it right away. Uh, over here so add this block uh, once this is done uh, we will uh, also uh, require a, a series RLC branch so search for series RLC you will be getting it over here at this block um, we will also be requiring a pulse generator block uh, to trigger the MOSFET so add this block uh, right click and add this so uh, we we also require uh, to check the display uh, to check the amount of magnitude uh, with respect to output voltage that we have so search for the display and uh, double click we also need uh, the scope to check how the waveform looks like so add that block as well uh, if we require to check mean and rms value then search for mean you'll be getting both mean and rms scroll down a little bit this rms and mean should not be selected be very careful with this uh, this is for a different purpose we have to select this rms value and this mean value at this block uh, once this is done, um, I guess uh, we have all the uh, blocks except one that is called as logical operator. Uh, we'll be using a NOT gate uh, during uh, the pulse generator block that we are supplying to the MOSFETs. So add this block as well. So once this is done, I guess uh, we are good with the circuit. So let's place them in appropriate position so that we can get started with the circuit connections. All right, so uh, we will be requiring four MOSFETs. Before that, double click on this and disable the measurement port so that we don't have to do it for all the MOSFETs. Now we can copy paste them. Uh, we'll have to rotate them in the upward direction. Uh, so now we can copy paste uh, two of them again so that uh, we can save a lot of time with respect to this. So once this is done, um, I guess uh, we can get started with the connection point of view. Uh, we will be using a pulse generator block uh, and a NOT gate. So change it to NOT. You will be uh, using it in order to trigger the MOSFETs in a particular manner. I'll be telling it out when we are actually triggering that. Let's connect this according to the configuration that they are supposed to be. Uh, be very careful with the position of the MOSFET. It should be in this uh, direction. Uh, care has to be taken with respect to that otherwise there are chances that you will not be getting the right output so the current measurement block should be connected uh, here uh, across the load so connect it in this particular fashion the load is connected across these no, we don't need freewheeling diodes as MOSFET uh, has freewheeling diodes uh, within it so uh, we will not be using that separately uh, and uh, we'll be connecting the DC supply across uh, this point so once that is done we'll be measuring the voltage across uh, the load uh, at this particular point and uh, the this particular point that we are measuring and uh, we also need uh, another display block so copy paste uh, the display blocks that we have and uh, the voltage is measured across this 
and it's given to RMS and mean value blocks to check how the waveform looks like. So we'll be supplying a voltage of about 24 volt. Double click on it and set the parameters now. Uh, and then uh, we'll be setting the time period to 0 0.01 seconds that is corresponding to one half cycle. And uh, the pulse width is chosen to be 50%. Uh, so 50% of the time they'll be on and 50% of the time they'll be off. So once that is done, we will be giving it through a NOT gate to the rest of the other two switches. First, we'll be giving it to Q1 and Q2 together. And uh, the rest will be giving it to uh, Q3 and Q4 through means of a NOT gate. So be very careful. And this is an important observation to make as well. So once that is done, I guess we are good with uh, the parameters except for the type of load. We'll be using a resistive load uh, initially to check how the waveform looks like. Uh, we'll be connecting it out. And uh, one more thing that uh, is required is to check output waveform as well. So connect it according to uh, the circuit. So that uh, connect it across the scope so we can see the waveform. Now reduce the simulation time to 0.5 seconds because these are static loads. Uh, so it doesn't require a huge amount of simulation time required. So that's it. Now we can click on run and check how the output waveform and the value of output voltage that we're getting. So uh, we are approximately getting 23 uh, volts. That is the supply voltage that we uh, have supplied. So that's exactly what is required according to our configuration. Double click on the scope to check how the waveform looks like. Let's uh, split this in this particular sequence. So both of them are seen separately. Um, so let's zoom in as well. Uh, we can zoom a particular portion. You can see this is the current waveform and this is a voltage waveform. It's very clear that both are square wave for our load. This is according to our theoretical uh, uh, perspective of how the waveform should look like. Uh, so now we'll change the load uh, to uh, inductive load. We'll choose its value to be 10 milli Henry and check how the waveform looks like in this case. Before that, uh, we will be closing the simulation window window and run it again so we'll see how the waveform looks like the output voltage will remain the same irrespective of uh, the load that is there um, you can clearly see uh, it's a triangular waveform and uh, approximately a square wave across the load so uh, this is uh, a pure DC uh, it, this is a pure AC output you can see both positive and negative uh, values of voltage that is there so we can further convert this to sinusoidal by connecting an inductor with a very high value so that can be done as well so once that is done uh, we'll be changing the load to RL to check how the waveform looks in this case. We'll be increasing the inductance value uh, just to see how the waveform looks like. You can change it for different values. If you're accurate with respect to design perspective, you will have to use the equations respectively. So you can see uh, the current is increasing. It's approximately, um, it's a triangular waveform, but you can approximate it to a sinusoidal waveform by uh, reducing the ripple over here with respect to this. Um, you can choose a suitable inductor value. However, the output uh, uh, waveform will be square wave with respect to voltage. So it's very clearly visible over here. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, we've seen all the various configurations that are available with respect to the loads that are concerned. Uh, if you like this video, please do like it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates. Uh, if you have any questions, please do write down the questions in the comment section below. Thank you.